Hi, it's Craig with Perlick here. In this video, we're going to talk about waterproof fabrics and two different approaches manufacturers are using to achieve water resistance or waterproofness in their fabrics. Um, the first is coated and the second is laminates. We're leaving DWR out of this video for right now. We've talked about that in the past. It's a different thing from what we're talking about right now. There's a lot of confusion about this, so I'm going to try and simplify it as much as I can. And later on in this video, we'll go into more details about some of the... Um, the more complicated aspects where this gets a little confusing. And I put two different jackets uh, in front of you here on a bubbler just to show you the difference in air permeability uh, between the two approaches. On this side, I have a coated fabric. On this side, I have a laminated fabric. And it should be pretty obvious that laminated fabrics are much more air permeable than coated fabrics. And let's talk about how they achieve that. So the best way this has been explained to me that's the easiest to remember is to think about um, painting a room in your house. If you're painting the room, that's a coating. If you're putting wallpaper up, that's a laminate. So let's focus on fabric coatings real quick. It's normally a PU or polyurethane coating that's put on the underside of the fabric at the factory. Um, it's very difficult to put that fabric on in a uniform or consistent method. And so you end up having to put it on thicker than you need to because, because some areas are going to be thin and you're only going to be as water resistant as the thinnest portion of that coating on that fabric. So they put it on unnecessarily thick uh, just to compensate for their lack of uh, consistency in putting that coating on. Um, and then it's cured. It has some advantages. It's very durable because the coating's on the underside and the only thing that uh, kind of harms its ability to add water resistance is abrasion. And since it's on the other side of the fabric, it's usually not subject to a bunch of abrasion. Um, other benefits is it's very inexpensive compared to laminates. Um, you'll typically find coating, uh, coated fabrics for water resistance used in things like rain flies on tents or shelters, as well as the ground cloths or the, uh, the footprints that are used underneath those tents. Um, it's also used in inexpensive rain jackets. The downside is that they put that polyurethane coating on so thick that it clogs all the uh, pores in the woven fabric. So you get no air permeability, as you can see from this example. Um, let's contrast that with a laminate approach. When they make a laminate, it's underneath a very controlled environment. They're putting it on an incredibly smooth surface. It's much smoother than a fabric surface could ever be. And they're able to do really neat things like add specifically sized pores into that laminate or membrane, it's also called. Or they're able to orient three-dimensional structures in that membrane that are oriented in such a way that uh, water doesn't have a path through those structures and wind doesn't have a direct path through those structures, but they're oriented in such a way that air can still find its way through those structures so it's still air permeable. Uh, advantages are obvious, performance advantages and air permeability as you can see here. Um, the disadvantages, it's expensive compared to a simple polyurethane coating. Laminates are usually uh, either polyurethane, PTFE or EPTFE, um, which uh, the PTFE are a Teflon based approach um, and uh, uh, they've come a long ways uh, since they were originally introduced way back when Gore first introduced their uh, waterproof breathable membrane. Um, so if that helps explain it and keep it simple, um, stop watching here. You know, at a very simple approach, polyurethane, low performance, low expense, laminate, high performance, higher cost. Um, where this gets a little bit more complicated is when people start saying, but some laminates are coated, and that's true. Uh, Gore, back in the day, had problems with their membrane being uh, soiled or fouled by body oil. So in order to protect it, they put a, poly, a polyurethane coating on the laminate. What that did was significantly reduce the air permeability of that membrane. So uh, up to as recent as Gore-Tex Pro Shell, we were not able to get air permeability through our bubbler when testing Gore-Tex membranes. The latest generation Gore-Tex Pro does much better. I did a video on that where I compared Gore-Tex Pro to Gore-Tex Pro Shell, and you'll see that the older Gore-Tex Pro Shell, no air permeability. The newer generation Gore-Tex Pro was air permeable. Um, this is also confusing because um, laminates can be in a three-layer configuration, 
a 2.5 layer configuration or a two layer configuration. A two layer meaning you got the surface fabric and the membrane underneath it. 2.5 layer, um, it is a coating, but for the, for the purposes of keeping this as clear as possible, let's talk about it as a geometric print that's put on the underside of that laminate. And I'll give you a close up of a couple different ones so you can see. A 2.5 layer still feels a little plasticky because you're feeling some of that laminate but you'll see that there's usually a printed substrate that's on there and that's just to give it that additional level of protection. Um, on a three layer, the membrane or the laminate is sandwiched between a, sh a surface fabric and usually a trico fabric on the inside. It's heavier but very, very durable and does a great job protecting that membrane. Um, so that's where you get some confusion is where, you know, there still are some cases where a laminate is coated, but as long as you think of it as that they're just printing um, uh, a design on it to help give a little bit more protection. It helps clears it up. Uh, we're happy to talk with you about this. If you have any questions on it, uh, feel free to give us a call. Area code 406-582-0508 or send us an email to info at prolightgear.com. Thanks for watching our videos and thanks for subscribing to our channel.